Good morning, students. Uh, today we're going to talk about disparate entities in education. Let's pull up my screen here. Okay, so first we want to look at this word disparate. Um, disparate is really similar to separate. Um, so how do separate entities influence school? And when we think of disparate, we're thinking of separate entities, maybe that don't even overlap, that don't have anything in common. And so to understand that, we have to think about who are the entities that influence uh, schools. So that starts with stakeholders, right? So now we have another word. What's a stakeholder? Um, so a, a stakeholder is basically someone who has a vested interest in a company or an entity like education. Uh, and so when we think of stakeholders in our own lives, who are the people who care most about your success? Um, those would be your stakeholders, right? Who's Who are the people who think about you, who, who want to know if you're doing well or if you're not doing well? And that's the interesting thing is stakeholders aren't always positive. Sometimes there are people who want you to fail or might want a business to fail or things. And, and so those are still stakeholders and they might have reasons for seeing something fail or evolve or be replaced. Um, and so when we think of companies, uh, an example that came to mind for me is uh, a big company, Google. Um, if I am a stakeholder in Google, and, and I am, um, I have a vested interest in their success, um, then I care about their stock price. I care about their innovations. What new products are they coming up with? What companies are they buying? And, and as we look over, I, I love this little chart because it reminds me when I first got interested in Google back when it was in its infancy, I thought this is a really cool company. It's going to do some big things. I had no idea how big it would grow. Uh, but way back in like 2008, I invested in the company. Now, I was a student at the time. I didn't have a lot of money. So I invested, I think, $30 and bought three shares of Google. So it wasn't a major investment, but $30 for me at the time was a financial investment. Now, in addition to investing my time, because I made that financial investment, now I was invested in other ways. I cared about if they were making growth, if they were buying companies. I paid closer attention to them in the news. And, and as my investment grew over time, that hundred or that, that $30 grew into several thousand dollars. And I remember around this time here where it peaked, and it had split several times at this point. And so my, my initial investment was worth um, actually about $2,000. And I thought now would be a great time to sell. And normally I don't think get things like this right, but we were at a, a position where we needed money to fix up our backyard. And so I took two of my shares of Google and I sold them and I made several thousand dollars and it paid for the plumbing uh, to put in sprinklers and it paid for materials so that we could build a walkway. And it was great timing for me. Now that investment in Google um, as a stakeholder really paid off because I got a return on my investment and it improved the quality of life. When we think about being a stakeholder in other kinds of entities, we have to think, is this going to be beneficial to me in the long term? Am I a stakeholder simply because I want it to succeed, et cetera? So um, let me bring this down to community. I'm going to show you a code. <laughs> so we live here in Cedar City and we've lived here for a few years now and we moved out into the country. And one of the things that has been new for me and my family is getting used to having goats and sheep and chickens and cows surrounding us. So we wake up to farm uh, noises, even though we're not farmers. Um, we do have chickens, though. So that's great. Um, but a, a few years ago, one of my son's uh, best friends asked him if he wanted to raise a goat and sell it with um, 4-H. And he said, sure, let's let's raise goats. So they did. And he had a good experience. And, and they walked him every day and took care of him and fed him. And then at the end of the summer, they sold their goats. And they made a few hundred dollars. And it was great. Um, the next year, he, my son's friend asked him again, do you want to sell your goat? And, and, and so my son thought, well... It didn't make a ton of money compared to what I was making mowing lawns and doing other things, uh, but it, it helped with our friendship that we were spending these time together. And so not only did they decide to raise goats together, but they invited one other friend in to raise goats with them. Well, that was all great. And at the end of the summer, they went to the show and he showed off his goat and it he was hoping to make more than the year before. I think he'd made $800 the year before and he was hoping for $900, but he thought that wasn't 
likely to happen. In fact, the people right before him in line sold their goats for like $500 and his goat wasn't especially big or the things that make goats valuable. It didn't have all those things. And so he, his um, expectations were tempered a little bit. But in the end, his goat sold for $1,300, meaning it was very profitable for him, way better than he expected. Now, why did the goat sell for so much? Well, it turns out that because he had raised goats before, because he is a kid who is willing to work, that there were stakeholders within our community who wanted to invest not in the goat, but in the kid who was willing to work hard. And the person who bought the goat actually bought the goat from both of his friends as well, paid a similar amount. So they all made out really well, made a ton of money off their goats. And the neighbor um, who knew these three kids from the neighborhood that bought the goats, he didn't need the goats at all. In fact, he was just going to have them slaughtered and, and turn it into meat, uh, meaning that he overpaid by like 99% because the value of the actual meat um, was very little in comparison to what he paid. So why was this neighbor willing to pay so much for these goats? Because he saw kids. Oh, sorry, I'm going to get emotional here. He saw kids out in his neighborhood every day walking goats. He saw kids who, instead of playing video games or doing other things, were working and were willing to do something hard over their summer break um, because they thought it would better their lives. Well, this particular neighbor had money to spend, and he, he saw this as an investment in his community, that he could influence the future by by rewarding these kids who are, were willing to work. I, I think that's really, really cool. Now, going back to stakeholders, when we think about, oh, and then we put together a gift for him. We didn't know this is part of the culture. You, you give him a gift bag. And so we hurried him through that together and gave it to our neighbor, gave him a hug, um, let him know we appreciated him. And that that's part of this as well. Now, thinking about education then, who are the stakeholders in education? Uh, you're going to do, do some readings this week and you have an assignment coming up where you have to think about all the various stakeholders. Now, obviously, when we think about schools, uh, the primary stakeholders are the students and the teachers. But are there other schools within the walls of the school? Of course there are. There's administrators, principals and others. There are uh, paraprofessionals and teaching assistants. Uh, there are the janitorial staff and, and the lunch crew. There's so many people that make schools work and they're stakeholders in education, maybe because they get a paycheck through it or because they're invested in the future and want to see kids succeed. And, and certainly for teachers, that's a big reason why you become a teacher is because you're a stakeholder in the future uh, of these students. So you're a stakeholder in your own students. But when we think about education more generally, there are people right there in the building. Now, outside the building, we have parents. We have even local businesses who, like in the example of the GOAT, want to see their community grow and thrive. Well, investing in education and investing in schools is an, an investment in the future. And so you, often we see local businesses partnering with schools or donating to schools, um, supporting different fundraisers or activities that the schools are participating in. So we have those kind of stakeholders. Then it extends beyond that. We have politicians who care about the future of education because it affects our economy, right? And it affects who takes new jobs. We have big businesses who want students to be educated in a way so that they can take jobs at their businesses. And so there are a lot of um, both political and economic factors that influence even what the curriculum is at school. Are we preparing students for the workforce? And so we've got uh, stakeholders there. And then the list goes on and on. And you're going to read about a bunch of these stakeholders uh, through your readings this week. Uh, but I just kind of want to introduce that. I, now, I know I skipped a slide earlier, so I'm going to go back and see if I need to talk about that. Oh, purpose of schooling. We talked about that last week. You read about that. And so understanding that schools aren't just to get grades. They aren't just to get good jobs, um, that schools are to help people develop into the humans they're going to be. And that has economic ramifications, that has social ramifications, it has political ramifications. And so um, that was just a review and I didn't do it, but there you go. So again, thinking about stakeholders, this is what I want you to think about this week. Um, and, and 
perhaps who are the stakeholders in education that you haven't been thinking about previously, not the obvious ones. And so you'll have to dig into your reading uh, to see that. And then we're going to do an assignment where you visually show the different stakeholders in education. It's a fun one, but I'll make a different video for that. All right. Thanks. Bye.